Okay, so welcome to the Trade the Fifth April webinar. We're going to concentrate quite a bit today on uh, combining the black box breakout indicator and the Elliott Wave indicator suite. But first, I want to go back through the basics for each one first. So this is a current trade I'm in, swing trading on the daily time frame for SSP. Okay, uh, this is a traditional fifth wave move, if you like, everything set up right. Now, I do have my black box breakout indicator on uh, here at the same time because it gives me an idea of what the volume is on these. But we'll talk about that in a minute. So let's just go back through the basics of how we set up that fifth wave move. So when we've had a nice impulse, big move up uh, on the wave three, okay, from these lows, helped by earnings, we get a profit taking pullback for that wave four. So the basics of the wave four is it pulls back into one of our probability zones. The green zone is the biggest probability, find support in there, 85% probability goes into the automated target zone. The next thing is the wave four behavior. Remember, that has to pull back between 90 and 140% of the highest point in the wave three, which it did and crowned and moved back up. The stochastic, the best and the, the high probability solution there is we've got the false breakouts in the top and the stochastic. It pulls back against there, crosses over in the oversold zone and then wants to head back up. And as you can see here, we get the green arrow on the stochastic signal as we're going into the trade there. So that's really good. We don't rely on that for the entry, but that gives us some great confidence there for that. So then we literally, we make sure we've got, uh, I've got a sensible entry with this one because I, uh, I needed to get it way above $22. I wanted to make sure we were moving well away from there. Now, 1 to 1.6 is our minimum risk to reward into that target zone for a fifth wave move, which we, which we have achieved, okay? So that is the basic, remember, the basic setup for the fifth wave. It doesn't need to be any more complicated. So what are the things that I'm, that I'm using right now on the black box that's going to help me out in this particular instance, okay? The first thing is the EMA cloud. You see how the wave four found support, not just in the linear probability zone, but also in the non-linear EMA cloud. That happens quite a lot, okay? So we are looking good there. But also, the multiple time frame dot cloud, again, look at this. We're all bullish, and then we pull back into the cloud, so we go cyan here, all the other time frames on the dot card, all the way up to weekly here, are all green. That gives us that confidence that we've got a strong bullish trend. Right, Trevor, the yellow dots are there to denote the main bullish trend. On a wave four, because we don't trade the way for, we wait for it to pull back against that into the oversold zone and cross over, okay? So no, we get in early. We, the, to, the, the stochastic, once it's crossed over there, that gives us the tick in the box that we have had a good behavior of the way for aligned with the 535 oscillator uh, and aligned with our pullback zones here. So we don't wait for the entry to come back into there. We get in. Now, there are other ways of getting in this a lot ag more aggressively. We can use the regression trend channel from wave three to wave four and go very aggressive into this, okay? Let's just change that to, um, to green. So another opportunity, really, I mean, this is very aggressive in these types of markets, but if you've got a regression trend channel from three to four, you can get in as it pops and closes out above there. So you've got this gray doji here, wait for the following day to go through it, and that's you, your long entry there. For me, I'm conservative with these types of markets at the moment right now. Uh, but no, you've got to get in, you literally got to get in, um, before this stochastic gets back in the yellows there, because by that time, 
as you can see now, we're at 60% profit times risk right now. So this is where we are right now with this trade um, because we are, you know, we're well on our way. If you wait till there, you've got no risk to reward. The stochastic is just to prove that the wave four behaved properly within our parameters, okay? Okay, sometimes they don't have yellow dots up here on the left, and that's fine because it's not a strong bullish trend. But the ones that do are the stronger probability ones, okay? But not all of them do. But we're, we're just, I'm just trying to use this as an example of one of the highest probability moves. And SSP is a good example of that. But no, they don't have to be in there. But you'll notice that this is not really a roller coaster ride, okay? This hangs around the overbought zone. So those will form. If we have got a roller coaster like this, you probably won't be having a wave four. So in 80% of the cases, you will get that yellow dot. And they're the ones that are the real high probability moves. So let's go to a different type now, which was, let me just make sure I check. No, I've got to get this one right now. SNG, okay. So with SNG, this is where I combined, um, I wasn't sure of the markets at this, at this stage when it came back down for the wave four, okay. Um, so let's just go through this. So we've got false breakout dots on the stochastic. The wave four has come down and it's crossed in the oversold zone, which is good. We have got the 535 crossed over, pulled back and crowned between 19 and 140. But I'm a li little bit late into this trade and you can see the wave four came below the cloud. But guess what? We got the black box signal coming out of the cloud here at 80.63. So it's not too late. We didn't miss that. So the, the green, uh, the green and the red. Let me just finish this and then I'll answer it, Steve. So we were late into this trade because we were unsure how it was going to react coming through this cloud. But we got increased volume. We got the black box breakout signal. So we can go really aggressive with this use the black box stop loss at 78.04, the entry at 80.62.5, and that gives us a one-to-one -to, -one to the previous wave three. This looks like a big resistance level to me, and it's struggling at the moment. But this gives us an aggressive entry strategy to get that risk reward lower, and we've got a one-to-two. If it really, if it hits that fifth wave target zone, this is a massive trade. So again, the wave four came down, Everything lined up, but you look at the multiple time frame dot cloud there. We actually went into the cloud on the weekly as well. So that was pretty, pretty weak pullback here. It came down quite a bit as far as the weekly is concerned, but everything else stacked up. We missed the entry. There was no real entry having the stop loss underneath the wave four like we usually do, but we got the black box breakout signal. So that was the ideal situation to combine the wave five trade uh, Elliott wave indicator suite to, to give us that confidence that if we look back on this now, okay, we've had a nice impulse leg from these lows. We've had a profit taking pullback, but an entry, our traditional entry wouldn't give us a risk, decent risk reward with the stop loss below the wave four and the entry above the six four moving average high. So what we did, leave it on the watch list, we get a black box breakout signal, we use that for an aggressive entry. Does that make sense, that aggressive entry? So now, Steve, what, uh, what the green and red envelope? Are we talking about these pullback zones here? Steve, the green, the amber, the red? or the actual bubbles on here with the prices in. And again, Steve, if you click on all panelists and attendees here, every uh, one of my team will be able to do it. The ribbon, this ribbon here, yeah? These are our probability pullback zones. 
So when we've got a wave four, the green zone gives us an 85% probability if we find support to go on and make that new wave five high into the automated target zone. The amber is an 80% probability zone. The red is 75. If it goes beyond there, we're getting into the realms of wave four failure, so we don't get in. So these are our probability pullback zones uh, for this wave four. And I think we can look for some different examples here for that. Um, again, <laughs> you know, this is a traditional entry in IRBT where we come back down, everything stacks up in the green zone, find support in the cloud for the, for the um, black box breakout indicator, and then we get the traditional entry outside the 6.4 moving average high here, and we're pushing higher today. 535 is between 90 and 140, but this is an example where we don't get the yellow, okay? We don't get the yellow at the top here on this wave three. We get the crossover here, but we've got a good entry, okay? We've got a good entry. Everything else stacks up on the stochastic and the 535. We haven't got the false breakout bar, but this is still a traditional trade, and it's looking pretty good right now. Oh, sorry, these displaced MMA, sorry. Right, these are our 6.4 moving average high, which are for conservative entry, uh, for longs, and these are 6.4 moving average low. So what this does is it's, the, um, it's a special moving average that's advanced to give us those entry positions for longs and shorts, but also if we're going long, we can use this for a, the, the, the 6.4 moving average low, as a trailing stock position as well. Yes, Trevor, yeah, the, the yellow dots are definitely the, the better looking trades. But the 6.4 moving average high, let's look for another example on maybe on SMG. No, that was, um, let me see, Ollie. Okay, so this is Ollie right now. Oops. So with Ollie, let me just move the stock back down here. Taking profits on this one today, it's running our juice. Um, okay, so with Ollie, we had earnings. So normally you will look for an entry coming out through the 6.4 moving average high, but because we got a big range bound period going into earnings here, we had to make sure that this was going to pop way above this. So normally is our 6.4 moving average high. And as you can see now, the 6.4 moving average low could be your trailing stock position to lock in profits. Now, my entry was also above the peak of this previous wave five as well. Uh, because I didn't want to, I didn't want to get this rejection here. So this is why the more conservative entry strategy right now. But everything else stacked up here. You know, this was an earnings play. Uh, 5.35 was good. Stochastic was good. Yellow dots on the top. Um, okay, so it just broke out and away we go. But we are running our juice right now. So I've taken profit. Even We've just made a new fifth wave high, but it's running out of juice within volume stages. If I just add the volume there before we go on and do some more examples, I want to show you what I mean by this. So if I go to equities here, show volume subchart. Now, so we've had the big move, okay, that took us into the trade on volume here. Now look how this volume decreases, okay, on this move here. Then we get another push on this, but the volume is still less than that big push. Then we get more decrease in volume until we get another green day, as in higher, slightly higher bullish volume. But look at the, how this con volume is contracting on these bullish moves. We are running out of juice. So that, that was the time for me to get out, okay? Now, I wanna do just, uh, I've got to find an example here. Okay, so LSCC. Let me just check because that's now gone to a wave three. Let me just check that. Cancel. 
bear with me a second. Okay, now this has gone and changed for a wave three. It was a wave four, but it's moved. Now, the thing here, this is where I've combined the black box breakout indicator and our Elliott wave indicator suite because we've got a rule for these pullbacks on our 535 and our stochastic, but it didn't come into our green zone, okay? So that was a failure for a traditional wave five trade. Now, the 535 pulled back between 90 and 140, the stochastic had the yellow bars at the top, it pulled back against there, crossed over in the oversold zone, and then wanted to come back up. And on the multiple time frame dot cloud, we were strong bullish with this one dot on this pullback. Okay, so traditional fifth wave didn't work, but for me, I've got the black box breakout signal here at 12.19.5. So 12.20 was my entry. I put my regression trend channel on here. This was the previous wave three high. Now, because we've got a slightly new high, that's now classed as a wave three. So I went from this high point here to this low point, put my regression trend channel on, and this black box breakout signal was actually outside of this regression trend channel entry. The stop loss was uh, printed here at 11.61.5, which was below the pivot. This was the trade. I know, uh, Jerry, you got this one as well. So, and this is the way, this is the trade. We got the breakout on that first day, we traced a little bit, then we got some momentum going. And we've got even more volume coming in losses on this green candle here. So you can see now I've combined that Elliott Wave Indicator Suite for some of those rules for that pullback. It didn't quite meet the green zone, so it's not my traditional fifth wave move, but I got a great black box breakout signal. I got contraction in price action, increase in volume. I then used my rules for those pullbacks on the 535 and the stochastic to give me confidence that that's a decent looking trade. It's not a traditional fifth wave trade, but guess what? The black box gives me a signal. It's outside my regression trend channel. It's an aggressive trade, but it paid off. Does that difference work as well? Does that, does that, does that explain that, that combining as well to give you those more aggressive entries? Okay, so that's another example. So these are all on daily time frames uh, for you know for stocks. This is a but you know whether you take that down to a sixty minute time frame um, or anything like that, it still works. It's still the same thing. The way the the Elliott waves react in the same way. Our um, EMA cloud works in the same way uh, on the black box breakout indicator, and we still get those same. Uh, results if you like. So that's uh, just off there a second. Um, okay, SAIC. I want to use this as an example today. So again, now this was an earnings play that I played. Okay, this was the earnings here. So we had the wave four pullback, the 535 oscillators pulled back between 90 and 140. We did get the crossover a little earlier here on the stochastic. No, um, no uh, false breakout bars on the top there. This was just a pure earnings play. But what it did, it took outside the 6-4 moving average high here. There, it would take into trade three days before earnings. Then it popped up on earnings. And then we've got this profit taking pullback happen right now. So even if you didn't get in this trade, your Elliott wave indicator suite is giving you the one, two, three, four, five. It's hit the fifth wave. Now we've had some profit taking. The catalyst to hit that fifth wave was earnings. Guess what? It's pulled back. There's been some profit taking to close the gap. But look how that volume is contracting since the gap up here contracting then yesterday we get a big volume green day which gives us our black box breakout signal okay it's found support in the cloud we got increased volume we've broken the duck if you like we've closed the gap we've got the signal 
we're good to go. 7586 was my is my entry, and I've put this out as part of my swing training membership. Uh, 7316 is the stop loss. We're having low volume on there today. We're getting some consolidation here, but this order's still good. If I haven't broken the stop, and if it pushes out through here, we should see more volume. Okay, so this is just another example of again looking at that um, Ellie Wave indicator suite to understand where you are in the trend, understand what's happening on earnings, look at that volume coming down on that profit taking, really running out of volume there. Then we get that spike and we get a good signal. And that's how to use them both together in that instance. There's, a, there's lots of ways of using these. And, and honestly, together, these make a formidable trading strategy. Okay, so I want to go to... Okay, it's uh, Wendy's, Wendy, Wendy, Wendy. Okay, so let's go to the 60 minutes. Okay, now I'm in this trade today on Wendy's, despite lots of other people saying it's only going down. Uh, <clears throat> so what we have here, I just want to go to the 60 minute time frame for just to show you these fifth wave moves as well. So on Wendy's on the 60 minute time frame, we've had this wave, the wave three, the wave four, just tipped into the green zone here, this probability zone. We, I always draw in these big resistance zones here. This is a massive resistance zone. So again, this is all about entry as well. 535s pull back between 90 and 140. We've got the yellow dots on the top here on the stochastic. We've pulled back against it. We've crossed over in the oversold zone. I keep repeating this, guys, because this is what you need to do every day. You repeat, repeat, repeat. Okay? It's simple and repeatable trading strategy. So we get this now moving. So with a 6-4 moving average high here for an entry is no good for us because it's below this big resistance zone. So we've got to make sure we're above all of that noise, if you like. So the entry was also above the high of this um, rejection doji yesterday. Uh, it's above all of this left shoulder. So the entry was 18.16. The stop loss was below the wave four at 17.86. And the risk to reward into the fifth wave target zone was one to 1.6. So even with that conservative entry, the trade's still a good go because the risk to reward is good. So again, traditional, but again, just looking at this six ball moving average high, it's not gonna help us on this, on this entry. We've gotta make sure we're above that resistance level. So it's about being sensible with these entry strategies as well, okay? Um, it's not setting stone that you use the six ball moving average high You've got to look at resistance levels as well. Let's have a look how CAT's doing as well. CAT, very similar sort of situation there where we've got that uh, move up. Uh, my entry was at 138.53 and it's pretty static right now. Uh, RSG, Trevor wanted me to look at RSG for a second. RSG. Ooh, wow, okay. That is a big gap down, leading into earnings, sell the rumor. This is, this is also whatever. This is big gap down now. This is, this is the catalyst we need for that wave four pullback. Low volume on this though. This has got to be news. I don't think it's rumor, it's news. Uh, but again, now we've got to look into this. We've got to look 25th of April. We've got earnings on this. What if this was a non-reactive, um, it runs out of juice on this wave four and we get support? We could get a little bit of a move here. Again, we, we got the black box breakout signal here. It didn't trigger. It got down. We didn't get in the trade. Not a, you know. Uh, so I would say... With RSG, you've got to be looking for this support level to form. Uh, I've got to measure this again now. Remove. So you're going to just measure this 535. Highest point on the wave three is over here. 
Okay, so you, you're, in, you're in the parameters there. You've not crossed over in the oversold zone yet. So there's some work to do there, but keep an eye on it on your watch list, as it were. Okay, let's bring futures charts over. Okay. And we will look at this. Just bear with me a second. Sorry about that, back again. Okay, it depends on the, um, the strategy that you're trading. So if you're day trading, you're gonna be looking at the black box uh, as the primary signal. If you're swing trading, you're gonna look at the Elliott wave. So if you're on a daily time frame with stocks, you're gonna be looking at that fifth wave move. And what the black box indicator does is give you those potential um, aggressive entries, if you like, or alternative entries, Trevor. So when you're swing trading stocks, the Elliott Wave indicator comes first. Your black box uh, gives you those better um, entries sometimes. Uh, when you're day trading, uh, you know your your main your main signal is going to be your black box breakout indicator. Uh, but, you know, it just gives you um, a good idea. So let me just go and have a look at this um, CLK19. Is that, is that forward slash CLK? There we go. Okay. So we which um, time frame was you? Oh, it was probably this trade here. This was a good black box breakout indicator. Hit the 200% to the T. Let's see if there was, well, there was quite a few here today, actually. Let me just zoom out. Uh, where are we? 10, 9.30 this morning. Okay, so we have here uh, 61, 14 entry on the black box, 64, 22 stop. And it went down massively. Absolutely, James. Yeah, this was one on the five minute here. Really, really good looking trade. We're trialing something in the minute, guys. We are trialing coloring the cloud. Uh, red, we, we, it, there's some of the things in the black box that we're trying to do that gives you uh, confidence on your bearish move because the cloud turns red or bullish move because the town, town, town uh, the cloud turns green. We're just trialing it at the moment. For example, this recent trade here, we came back down below the cloud, we tested. We were also red with our three moving averages that feed into that. Um, yeah, it's very good for oil trades. Uh, and then you've had two trades today that have gone huge, okay? Uh, I mean, this one here, from today, this first one didn't trigger on the five minute. This second one triggered and 64.14 to 63.89, that's a big move. And then today, this current move as well, that's a 200 percenter as well. So works very, very well for this. Some great trading there, James, I must admit. Um, you know, you could just sit and watch that all day and this is what this does. And we're just trialing this at the moment with this red part of the cloud. But again, you've got to remind yourself, let's just get rid of that volume for a second. Futures. Okay, I'm gonna go through a few things here to help um, everybody else. So at this moment in time, okay, when we get this signal here, for example, all of our multiple time frame dot cloud is red. My key time frame on this, the bottom one, is 30 minutes, no more. Okay, so the top one is the five minutes I'm on 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes. Now, when we get this signal, we've got the false breakout bar already in the oversold zone, okay? Already, so this is part of your Elliott Wave Indicator Suite. Now, that's gotta give you confidence that there's a lot of bearish momentum here, okay? And this is gonna go, 
let's look at here when we get this signal we get the signal here okay we didn't quite we didn't quite get the yellow false breakout there we're all red on the multiple time frame dot cloud but you know what we you know once we get into there we're going we're going now this is where it comes in when we start to form that yellow dot down on the bottom here you've got to think now you've got to let this run this is really strong bearish here ride the pullback comes back down and makes lower lows because we've got this false breakout on the stochastic so again here we're actually combining a tool that we've got on the uh, Elliott wave indicator suite uh, the false breakout stochastic giving us confidence to stay in that trade allow the pullback to happen okay that's just the stop to break even or something like that or just above the cloud okay but this false breakout bar shows strong bearish momentum so let it happen comes back down bigger win okay let's go back to es the oil's probably behaving better at the moment futures indexes are at these points where we are just going flat okay very very few signals there was a signal here at 2896 stop uh, 2892 entry and that was a decent little move there okay it's still in it if you're still in it there all the dots weren't red at that time though when we got the signal um, but it did actually go all red when we went through the entry uh, so there are a few signals there on the indexes at the moment with futures but very very few and far between you can see it's very corrective using the Elliott wave indicator suite these corrections just going on and on I mean look at this yesterday it was awful the price action was absolutely awful you know even this fifth wave move wasn't many ticks um, you know it's just really really awful so we do have here um, earlier on in the week we have a wave for pullback on this five minute chart for ES it pulls back into the red zone here okay now obviously this goes conversely here we go all red on the multiple time frame dot cloud and then we go cyan and green as the, as the uh, higher time frames pull back as well higher the false bar stochastics on the bottom we get the nice pullback and crossover we've got a trade here on our hands we're not using the black box breakout indicator here we're using the fifth wave move and guess what it comes down to hit the fifth wave on the target there so very very good looking fifth wave move there so again uh, there was no breakout signal here there may have been on the three minutes have a look on the three minutes I don't know what time frame do you use for oil, Doug and uh, um, James? Do you use three or five? Don't tell me one minute. <laughs> I'm too old for using one minute. Five and 15, yeah, that's sensible. I don't like anything other than that. Um, you know, on the three minute, when you go into range bound like this, you might get some decent signals like this one here. This is that wave for pullback. We didn't even get a signal on the three minute to come back down here. Um, so that was a that was a fifth wave move. That wasn't a, a black box breakout move. Let's just restore those cells. Okay. So as you can see, this this becomes really, 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 really cool to uh, to combine both of these indicators. OSK was another one. Two trades on this one, guys. Okay. I want to talk through these. So this was OSK on the daily time frame. Now, I played two trades here. The first trade was the traditional wave four pullback. I'm going to repeat this again. 90 to 140, crowned lovely. False breakout dots on the top time frame, pulled back on the wave four, crossed over in the oversold zone. So we've got traditional entry here, which was um, 77.35, okay? I went, look left again, look at this big red candle on the left here. I want to go above there to make sure I'm good. So I put my entry in first, I put my stop loss in first, then I go for my risk to reward to the automated target zone, one to 1.6, fantastic, okay? 
but I want a more aggressive entry as well, which I did. I used this black box signal coming through the uh, here, 7497 stop, 7797 entry. I got a quick breakout trade and took 50% profit times risk. What does that do? Let's just say now I risked a thousand dollars on this longer term swing. I risked a thousand dollars on this short term breakout. I've just won five hundred dollars and put it in the bank. Okay, even if this whole trade goes against me right now, I'm minus five hundred dollars, not minus a thousand dollars. So I've got money in the bank. If that again, if that shot up massively and got to this previous wave three. I'd be at $1,600 profit on the aggressive entry trade with the black box breakout indicator. And I also, I'd be at 100% at, um, on my traditional. So between them, that's 2.6%, uh, 260%, $2,600. Are you going to wait for that fifth wave target zone? No, you're not. You're going to get some resistance here. You're going to get out, take both trades off. As it happened, I ran out of juice. I took the, uh, the $500, um, I've got that in the bank now, and this is around about $350 profit right now. So it's had this little pullback, it's still behaving well. So I've combined the black box breakout indicator there and the Elliott Wave to put two trades on, okay? Me, personally, I've got five trading accounts, okay? They're split into different uh, numerical values. Some of them are used just for blend investing, some of them are used for day trading, uh, and two of them are used for swing trading. Uh, so I can put on orders in different accounts for the same stocks, and that's how I play that, because again, I don't want all my eggs in one basket, and all my money in one basket as well. So you know that's the idea with that, but that allows you to do those multiple entries and different strategies. Um, let me have a look on CBRE. Yeah, okay, so CBRE, again, another example where we had a wave four pullback, but we've got a big range bound period here. The traditional entry and, and stop would be below the wave four and outside the six four moving average high would have given me no risk to reward whatsoever. Okay, but guess what? I got a black box breakout signal coming out here. I could have a more aggressive entry. I checked my 535, the pullback's good on the way four. I checked my stochastic, false breakout bar on the top, it's crossed over in the oversold zone on the way four. So as far as the way four behavior is concerned, it's good, okay? But I need an aggressive entry to get a better risk reward to make me money. Otherwise, I would not get in this trade because the risk reward is too less. Got the black box breakout signal, 48.90 stop, 50.09 uh, or 50.10 entry, got the breakout signal, and this is where we are right now, 100%. Okay, so really, really good looking trade. So again, combining both of those, uh, without that black box breakout signal, I would not have entered a trade on CBRE because the risk reward wasn't good enough for a traditional fifth wave move. But that allows me to show there's an increase in volume, there's a build up, there's a potential squeeze out of that breakout, and there was, and I got a good trade. Right, so let's answer Steve's question first. Do you have an example on a weekly trade? I will show that on a fifth wave. We don't do breakouts on the weekly, but Steve, I'll show you an example on the weekly trade uh, for, for a fifth wave move in a second. Trevor, how can you determine if we have false breakouts from the cloud? You cannot. Most likely, in most cases, let's just zoom out here. This is a very clever cloud, okay? This is not a false breakout. Look, when, it, when we get the increase in volume and we get that accumulation here, it breaks out and it goes, okay? When it pulls back, it goes down below, we get the increased volume and it goes. So 80% of the time, if not more, Trevor, you don't get those false breakouts of the cloud. They get going and it's been designed for that that way. There will be instances when it fails and I, you know that happens, that's trading. But in the majority of the cases, if you get that black box breakout signal, again, remember, you will only get that signal if it 
if it if the um, the price action, the volume, and everything else that goes into our black box calculation actually gives you that signal. If you come through and it doesn't give you the signal, this, you, you don't do it. Okay, so now I'm going to go to weekly time frame and I'm going to look at, um, got to think here what we're in at the moment. Um, oh, Jerry, what the weekly trades are in at the moment with the inner circle. Um, It's FTNT, that's one, yeah. So here we are um, with uh, INTC, yeah. So these, this, is, this is the weekly time frame. This is an example of, uh, the, you know, with a weekly time frame, uh, my inner circle and I do a lot of these um, because we have these longer term outlooks and these could take 20, 30 weeks to, to reach fruition. Um, but again, I, I you know, I won't talk too much about that, but you know, this is a traditional fifth wave move. It's on the weekly time frame. Every candle is a week. We've pulled back in the channel between the wave three and the wave four, and it almost hit it. It's come back into the 75% probability, but everything was good everywhere else on the 535, on the, uh, the, the stochastic, and then we got that traditional entry that we wanted. Uh, again, for me, it wasn't just the 6.4 moving average high. I wanted to get above the cloud as well. So 55.48 was our entry. And it's at the highs of the week already. INTC is another one, another example, another great example. Uh, I just need to change that time frame. Uh, where are we? Why isn't that coming up, Jerry? Let me just check that. I uh, don't know why that's not coming up, but we're in INTC. PTC is another one. Okay, PTC again, exactly the same sort of thing. Uh, we've had uh, the wave four pullback, found support of previous support resistance zone and in the green zone. Uh, the 535 is good. Just tips the 140, but that's okay. Started to crown way before the entry. Uh, fire, the, the stochastic false breakout on the top, and for a weekly, that's a strong bullish trend. Pull back, crossed over. We entered this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine weeks ago. 92.07. Again, sensible conservative entry because we've got a decent risk reward into our target. 116.83 and then one more uh, FTNT. Okay, uh, this is uh, I'd have to isolate the wave count there, but I think if I just go down a little bit, there we go. Okay, so FTNT, this is another one. We entered this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten weeks ago. Okay, so it's, a, it's about accumulating these. So again, wave four pullback on the weekly, found support, green stroke amber zone, 535 is good. Okay, here, stochastic is good. False breakout boss, strong bullish trend, good profit taking pullback on the weekly time frame, and we're ready to go. Okay, we get the entry and we move up. We're about what 75%, 70% times risk at the moment on the profit. But when you start adding all these together, I call it my sausage machine strategy. Uh, you're starting to put a lot of these longer term swings in on the weekly, you're putting these uh, shorter term swings in on the day or medium term on the daily time frame. You're adding in your day, your day trading with a black box breakout indicator. You're getting aggressive breakouts on your daily time frame that's only in a week or the 60 minute. Uh, and you, you actually you put in lots of ingredients into this sausage machine that keeps giving you those consistent profits. Okay, you will not get a bearish signal on the black box breakout indicator unless it closes below the cloud, Trevor. The same for a bullish signal. And again, the signals come out. You don't get signals on the weekly, by the way. Um, so first of all, um, so, so Steve, you, does that answer your question on the weekly? Does that help you on the weekly?
It should be included, James, the cloud. It should be included. Um, there's probably different uh, files in there. Yeah, you can't shade it, okay? You can only have two lines on TradeStation. Now, honestly, you wouldn't believe the stress and headaches I go through to try and develop these platforms for Think or Swim, TradeStation, NinjaTrader, MultiCharts, and now MT4. It's every little, there's so many different nuances with these different platforms. It's so frustrating. You cannot shade in the EMA uh, cloud on uh, on TradeStation. You can do it on NinjaTrader. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so it is just an absolute, honestly, it is a nightmare. The, the black box breakout indicator is re reasonably simple. Uh, the, imagine the Elliott Wave indicates it's really, really difficult, but it works and you will only get those signals when it comes out of the cloud. But yet, yeah, two lines. Yeah, that's, so let's just go, let's just take that, bound to, that back down to the daily a second. Um, and did we get in VIB yet? No, we didn't. Okay, so a little glimpse of what we, uh, what I look at on multiple time frame strategy, part of the Elliott Way uh, Elite Training Course, multiple time frame strategy. So VIB is a is a prime example. Okay, so I'm going to look at it on the four hour time frame first because I, on my watch list, if you like, I got a signal for a black box breakout signal here um, today. Okay. I've got this wave four pullback on the four hour, but it's not really a great looking trade. So what I've done is I've gone down to the 60 minute here. I mean, it may not trigger, okay? Uh, but at the moment, I've got a wave four pullback. It's gone range bound. My 535 on the 60 minute is good. My stochastic false breakout on the top is good. We've got the crossover here. It's crossing back down again right now, but I'm not in this trade. This is my sensible entry. And look, today, I've got another black box breakout indicator to go long on the 60 minute. This is quite strong bullish. Obviously, the market's just had a big downturn right, you know, in the last uh, hour or so. Uh, but they seem to be consolidating right now, which is good. So this is how I've set that up. There's a lot that goes into the multiple time frame strategy, and I teach that on the training course. But the idea is, is we're using the Elliott Wave Indicator Suite, the Black Box Breakout Indicator, our, our knowledge of charting uh, to really, really look for some real high probability moves. Uh, this one hasn't panned out yet. It's not triggered. It might not trigger, but you've got to keep pulling them through. Um, let's have a look at W. I'm trying to find another example. Okay, yeah, this is this is the this is the one I wanted to look at actually. So C I E N. So Jerry brought this to my attention the other day. Um, now this is this is looking like a potential breakout to, to the downside. So we've had a really really strong bullish trend. Okay. Very strong. Okay, with some big, uh, big numbers coming through on earnings and some massive volume, it's come all the way up. But look, just recently we had poor earnings, and since then we've come down from our highs. Now, what's happened is on the daily time frame is we've got this support level that keeps being tested. We've got this contraction, this this line, this trend line here. We've got the cloud turning down now. Okay. We've tested the cloud and then we've got a black box breakout to the downside. Now, look, the stop loss 38.45 has not been broken during this range bound period. The entry 36.57 has not been taken in yet. So this now is still a great signal for a breakout because we're below all of these support levels. And look at the fresh air 
below here to the next support level, all the way down to $31. So we've got this um, contracting um, price action, this triangle, if you like. Uh, we've got the earnings reaction, which was not brilliant. We've got this nice move down. We found that support at previous support, but it just doesn't want to go up. We've got the black box breakout signal for the short, and so the order's still on. Trevor, the scanner is the black box scanner, okay? There's no scanner for the, um, for the Elliott Wave Indicator Suite. <laughs> uh, we are working on that, but that's probably a year away, okay? Okay, the scanner ser signal service is actually on the website. I'm just going to bring it over now. Uh, no, that's not the right. Let me just go here. So the stock signal service. So I pay a lot of money for my data. Okay, at the moment, I can't uh, build uh, the scanner for the Elliott Wave. So what we do in the stock signals membership is my scan results that I can run using my institutional grade software, I put the results every single day for potential shorts and longs on the weekly, the daily, and the 60 minute time frame. And you just simply, for, for longs for example, you click on the spreadsheet, download the spreadsheet, and this basically forms your watch list. Obviously you've got to do a bit of work, um, so what the spreadsheet looks like, like this, uh, potential longs on the daily here look. Uh, so it gives you the, uh, the ticker, what it is on the daily time frame, the group, the volume, the two day high, the yearly high, the yearly low. So that gives you a starting point if you like. Uh, and they, this is great. Uh, and I do this every single day. And that is there. Okay, um, no, this is just for stocks. This uh, It's a stock signals membership. For futures, you need to build a watch list with your black box like this. Oh, excuse me, I'm trying to fight this cold. It's not happening. Uh, okay, so on your futures. Now, Put in whatever futures you want, the Qs, the SPY, the ES, the NQ, the RTY. We can put in uh, CL here, okay, K19. Okay, so build out your watch list. So let me just make that a little. Hi, this is Paul. We had technical issues right at the end of the webinar during the last piece, and I was going to talk about how to build a watch list for your futures for the black box breakout indicator. So you've already got the um, instructions and video on how to uh, put in the script for the, um, the suite uh, and to build up your watches. I just want to go through some of the basics again. So in my gadget area here, I'm going to I'm going to put I've got in Qs, Spy, ES, YM, NQ, RTY, 60, CL, whatever I want to do. Okay, so now what we can do is we can add columns to this for different time frames. So you've got the three and the five minute there. I can customize this watch list and I can add my 15 if I like. Okay, so I can add my 15 minute, add the item. Again, you're gonna to need to watch the video on how to 
uh, put your script into this and build those different time frames. But it's all in the instructional video that you receive when you get the uh, indicator suite. So now I've put 15 minutes on there. And as you can see now, these just light up when there's signals. So you can see on all of these at the moment, there's no signals because we're having a pretty flat rangey day. Uh, we've had a recent short signal here on ES that was taken in and was a great trade, but now we're moving back towards the clear. But on the 15 minute here on the queues, for example, we've got a potential. Let's just change this to 15 minute here. Okay, so we've got a potential breakout to the upside here. Uh, on our watch list, it's in green, and there you see it on the chart. Uh, NQ on the 15, we've got a potential breakout to the upside as well. That's not quite as clever, that one. Um, uh, RTY. Okay, so these aren't too good. You just got to go through 6E, the euro. We've missed that one. Uh, but again, so, you know, this is the sort of thing you've got to build up the time frames you want to trade, the futures you want to trade, and just build out the time frames in there. And they give you the signals. You see the cues here. Right now, we've had this really, really horrible day. We've, the cloud has found support, and now we've got that black box breakout signal on the 15 minute. Obviously, we've got YM on the three minute coming for a potential signal now. So that's go through. That's just popped up. So we'll just change there. Usually on my future screen, I have all the time frames that I'm trading, uh, and I just I can see them and just click on there and go through. So that signal's gone away. So it did. And now we're going bullish. You see, it's gone away on the watch list until it won't print on the chart until we get the close of the candle. So you'll see it on the um, on the watch list on the scanner before it actually finishes. So you'll see it disappear if we if the signal goes away. Once we get the candle close, that's when the signal will become permanent. But it didn't. It didn't fail. So that's where we go. So that's how to quickly build your watch list for futures. Look at the futures you're trading. Get your uh, script in your different time frames. And then obviously for me, I like to have, if I go to my flexible grid, for example, um, I've got all my different time frames here. So I've got the three minute, the five minute and the two minute. So I can change that. If I go to customize here, I can take that 15 minute off. I can add my two minute. Here. Move it to the top, press OK. And there we go. So it's loading up the two minute time frames now. Uh, my, my charts linked, so go to NQ. Um, oh, it's not linked to the moment because that's number eight. So let's just change that to number six. And click NQ. So all my time frames are there, and we've got a potential signal forming here on the two minute. And there's the signal. It's not been broken yet. It's in green on my watch list, and that's the signal forming just there. ES on the two minute is forming a signal. There it is. Okay. And uh, just let just basically you can build up those watch lists on the time frames you want to go. So you know, quite a lot looking here to want to break out right now. Okay, so hopefully that concludes the webinar. And I do apologize for that last technical hitch right at the end there. Have a great trading week, and I'll speak to you all soon.